everybody. Welcome to the SoxProspects.com podcast. We're the web's number one source for information on the Boston Red Sox farm system from top to bottom, from Fort Myers to Pawtucket, and all stops in between. Thank you for the listen. My name is Chris Hatfield. I am the executive editor of SoxProspects.com, and I am joined, as always, by our director of scouting, Ian Cundall. Ian, you're wearing a sweatshirt. It can't be that bad up there. It's like 50 degrees. No, it's like 55, but it's miserable. It's windy. You're going to hear paper shuffling because I'm getting organized because I don't like getting organized before we record. <laughs> I but, literally uh, start recording and I see him just start madly grabbing <laughs> folders. Uh, it's very windy. There's leaves everywhere. Yeah, that's, you're a wuss, man. You're... Dude, I was wearing three layers at the game last night. Okay, but was... At the game is different, especially when you're on the on the river. That's, on the, that's the Maryland. It was right? very cold. I, I, I realized how, how like – how used to summer I've been because it was like 60 degrees. I was wearing like yeah. a fleece, a quarter zip, and a windbreaker. <laughs> I was like, it's actually not that cold, but yeah. All right. Well, as, as you can imagine, Ian's been at uh, – he was at all three games of Lowell's first round victory. No, I wasn't. You weren't? Because I, I, one game was in Batavia, so I did oh, not Oh, you weren't in Batavia. In Batavia. Good, yes. good point. I Ian was at, was at both home, home games. Uh, yeah, I, I would never send you to Batavia. I don't hate you that much. Um, I don't even know where Batavia is. I'm assuming I, it's in the it's middle in of nowhere New York. It's in New York yeah. somewhere, I think. Um, yeah, th- th- we would not send you to Batavia. But yeah, Ian was at the two home games in Lowell's first round. New York Penn League playoffs victory over the Batavia Muck Dogs, um, affiliate of the Miami Marlins. Uh, Lowell's moving on after a couple of uh, big walk-off wins, thanks to our buddy Big Joe Davis. Um, which we'll talk more about that. The Salem Red Sox are up 2-1 as we record this in their first-round series against the Wilmington Blue Rocks, former affiliate of the Boston Red Sox for two years. And, uh, yeah, new rankings, lots to talk about. Uh, We want to give a shout-out to our $5 level Patreon supporters, that would be Sox Signatures, Kyle Costigan, Tyler Woodrow, Jeff Trainer, David Nardone, Tim Harding, Bill Stanton, Deb Kendall, Evan Kirkwood, Hurricanes 1, Chris Fox, James O'Hara, Nathan Kenyon, Andrew Wallman, Mendel Martin, David B., Ben Burnett, Cy, Al Mendel, and Kevin Katridis. Um, fun note, it, 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 was, it, was it David, who, Dave Nardone who sent us the, uh, the message I read you earlier? He's in Bangkok. That's awesome. We've got, we've got people in Bangkok. We've got people in... Uh, Where's Ray? The Philippines? The Philippines, yeah. This is sick, uh, man. We've We're, got people in Scotland. Pre- we do. That's true. <laughs> Pre- prestige worldwide. The Sox I mean, Prospects podcast. I bet a lot of people don't realize there was a year where I was recording the podcast from London. So, <laughs> <laughs> Boats and hoes. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Fishing yeah. ships if you're, if, like it. Hey, I'm having tea this morning, man. In Couple your them. honor. Like it. Um, you know, if you're hey, if you're listening to this internationally, shoot us an email at podcast at socksprospects dot com. We want to know. We want we want to talk about what you want to hear about, but we also want to know where the hell you are. Because because so like, you're saying you want to talk about like soccer more. I want to talk about geog- Oh, dude, literally no one wants that. I know. People based get so on mad. based on the Twitter feedback, literally. Yeah, no I think one it's wants the same that. guy every time. That's my theory. <laughs> That's what I tell myself. Awesome. Um, all right, and we, 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 we let's jump right into it because I already dropped the handle for the uh, emails, uh, and we do have an email, by the way. We'll get. And to there's that. a lot to talk about. There's a lot to talk about. I mean, let's get to the playoffs because is this the most exciting minor league playoff week you can remember? Because I think well, it is for me. Yeah, I was talking to I was talking to Kelly or Kelly O'Connor, who's the site photographer, and does a great job. Yeah, uh, everybody, working. everybody's photographer. She really is everyone's photographer. She's like, basically the Red Sox prospects photographer. Yeah, but um, and we were like, and I said something. I was like, I can't remember the last time they actually had multiple affiliates in the playoffs, and it was like, yeah, I don't really remember either. Because no, they know. have relatively recently. Really. Yeah. I feel like they just don't win anything. I don't, I don't, I don't want to look it up because that would take too long, but they, they definitely have within the past few years. It's really? just like last year, everybody stunk. Last well, year was year, a like, bad year. Wasn't Salem terrible in the first half, and they were good in the second half? They I don't weren't even that. that great in the second half, I feel like. like they, no. they also reeled off a bunch of wins at the end of the year. No, Salem was 42-28 and 28 in the second half. That's good. Okay, yes, that's very good. That's 600 ball. But I think they also won, hold on, schedule, Salem. Yeah, they were 25 and 42 in the first half. They were the worst team in the league. 
Yeah, and it, it, so they closed the regular season by winning one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of their final thirteen games. Pretty good. So before that, they were um, thirty-one and twenty-six, five games over five hundred, and they finished like the, fourteen games over five hundred. It's like the opposite of Lowell, who was in control from like the first week of the yeah. season. Yeah, Lowell just ran the table in their division. And now they're in the finals. Yeah. Spoiler alert, sorry. Well, I mean... It's, oh, I guess you already people, talked about Big Joe, I, so yeah. I, I mentioned Big Joe. Yeah, last year was when the Sea Dogs, Salem, and Greenville were all in last. Uh, but, like, the GCL Sox were in the playoffs last year. Oh, I don't even count, like, GCL, DSL, really. But I, um, I was just thinking about, like, the... I guess Greenville was in in 17. 17 would have been Greenville and maybe Salem. I mean, I don't want to look at the uh, first and second half because that's 16. That long. Mm, Salem was Lowell. definitely in the playoffs. Lowell was in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, at least in 2016, Salem, yeah. Lowell, and the GCL and one of the D- both the DSL teams made the playoffs. 15, no one made it except for the GCL. Yeah, the GCL team is always good, but like other well, than Well, but that, it's because there's four teams. <laughs> True. There were four teams in their division until this year. True, but other than that, like yeah, they, they, they've struggled. Like I know Portland hasn't been very good since like 2014. Like Pawtucket, I can't remember the last time Pawtucket made the playoffs. Um, yeah, so I don't know. It's good to see a couple teams still playing, and obviously, like having been to these games, there's just a different like feel to regular season. Yeah, games you want to talk Lowell players. first? So Lowell lost the opener in Batavia. Um, Noah Song and Chris Murphy through that game, which is yeah. they lost the Song game, which is interesting. But yeah, the Song Murphy game, like those two, yeah. literally are the two bat like that we're deciding between for the Rookie of the Year. Spoiler alert um, for the site, and they lost that game by a score of dot 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 four to one. Four to one. Thank you. I wasn't down there yet. Oh God, I hate MILB.com now. Um, yeah, they lost it four to one uh, at Batavia, but then they came back, and you saw two games. The first game on the fifth was started by one Jay Groom, which I'm glad you didn't have to drive to Connecticut to see him this year. Yeah, um, he, he that was a really him. well played game, actually, for Penn League. It was shocking. Yeah, two to one game, two to one like, victory. It was, it was very intense. But like, we're we're burying the lead where Usniel Padron Artiles struck out the first twelve batters he faced instead of professional yeah, baseball that was record or that affiliated was baseball I've record. I've never seen something like this. Like uh, I got to say like this Batavia lineup has a ton of swing and miss in it, obviously, oh, yeah. as you yeah. saw like the next night, like, like Aldo Ramiro struck out eight in like three and two thirds innings or something. But who was the what, team I saw with you? Do you remember? Was that Vermont? Cause they had yeah. a few guys. Yeah, that was Vermont. They had a few but, guys in that. Drone Artiles was, he was really good. It was, uh, it was funny. Yeah. Cause it, cause groom was the one everyone expected to get the headlines. And then like Padron Artiles is being featured on ESPN.com. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you uh, sneal, YP, a nice cold, refreshing YPA. Yeah. Um, and then last night, as we record this on Saturday morning, they won four to three and another walk off, both walk off. Not courtesy. Well game. <laughs> That game took like almost four hours. Well, was, indicative of how the walk-offs happened. On Thursday night, they walked off because Big Joe came up in the tenth and went yard. Which, by close. the way, his like the video of him rounding the bases, him in the last like third of the stretch from third to home is fantastic because he looks so fired up yeah. and it's terrifying because it's oh, Big Kelly, Joe. Kelly got some great photos. She got some that. tremendous yeah. photos. Yeah. Um, but then last night he had the walk off on a uh, a walk off e six in which the shortstop's throw like barely took the catcher off home plate. Yeah, it was. It was. I was very happy. Like if it was a first baseman covering, he probably holds the bag. Well, because the thing that was tough was it, Batavia was playing this absurdly. They were playing it like it was a World Series game. Like they were put bringing in lefties. They they Ooh, pitched Batavia? like Batavia. Yeah, they pitched like seven guys. Oh God! And that's terrible. They were that's like a that's like a September Boston Red Sox. They were making mid inning pitching changes. They were bringing in a lefty, oh, Nick Decker. Like they they, they brought they brought in a lefty specifically for Decker, like or Stephen Scott, like three times or twice. Like nobody it was, threw more than two innings. 
yeah they had guys every time they got a runner on first base they were bunting him to second like it was absurd. no batavia oh, pitcher yeah. faced more than 11 batters yeah it was crazy like i just i i was my i like i understand you want to win but at the end of the day it's all about development but like they were bunting like their leadoff hitter who was on base like four straight times at one point and they're bunting him with no outs and it's like what are you doing here come on like let the kid hit I don't know. Um, Sorry. Well, I mean, you got to learn to bunt. No, I get that. But like, he's your leadoff hitter. He's like your best hitter. You don't need to bunt him. Like there was a situation like, and then in the 10th inning, like Gilberto Jimenez bunted, but that was because they had a guy on second and no outs. It's like, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. And Gilberto Jimenez is also the best bunter on the team. So it's like, yeah, that works. But, um, yeah, this game was not well played. There were four errors. Uh, there were ejections. The umpiring was atrocious. Like <laughs> New York beyond City umpiring bad. is always bad. I'm oh, sorry. it's beyond bad. The um, the Batavia manager got thrown out for. He was a hundred percent right. It was a horrible <laughs> call. But uh, like he got thrown out. Then there was major confusion over whether they start with a guy at second base and extra yeah, innings. Yeah. Like because no, we were like looking in the stands and we couldn't find anything in the rule book that said what happens in the playoffs. I guess you don't. But yeah, it did was they just, the night before. Did the night before end in nine or ten? Nine. Nine. Okay. It, so it so I was wondering why that didn't come up, but that makes uh, sense. But yeah, so it was just like the whole game. It was just. It was just very. It took almost four hours. Like it was just, and it was freezing. It was just. Yeah, it was cold, but there was a lot of good baseball. There were a lot of good pitching performances, and I, I will give credit. Lowell did did do that. Also, they brought a Tom Wendell, like a I, I was just about to say that a guy with a guy on second to face the three hitter who's a lefty who can't hit lefties, which was pretty funny. But yeah, Dude, it was. He's uh, on the roster, man. Exactly. I mean, it's. I mean, the thing is, like, then they got him the heck, the heck out of the game and went yeah, back he to. Regularly scheduled, regularly yeah. scheduled programming. But that was pretty funny. Chris when Jackson and who else? Fernandez. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that was pretty funny when he came. They brought in a lefty specialist just for a lefty, which I enjoyed. But yeah, that's I tremendous. Don't know. When we do it's, it, it's funny. When Batavia does it, it's a disgrace, well, right? They did it in the second inning or like the third inning. It was crazy. They did. So, yeah. Well, they also didn't have Ryan Zephyr John and Aldo Ramirez to throw. Who? No. Who shoved? No, they, uh, well, yeah. not shoved. I guess Al, Aldo gave up two runs, but that was on a home run, right? No, it was on. Um, I'm thinking of the night double. before then. No, there was no home runs. Um, he, no, you're thinking of Chris Murphy in the first yeah. game. Murphy had That's a home what it was. Run. Yeah, he only gave up two runs, but it was on a homer. But yeah. So should we talk? Do you want to talk about the guys in this game first, or do you want to go circle back to the? Previous you were there, game? homie. You tell me. Which one? I don't know. What, what you want? What you want to talk about, man? Who? Well, I mean, let's start with the four. The four starters well let's start everyone wants to hear about groom talk about groom because let the, tell them tell them about groom because i you, well, sh- you sent me photos well because well since we last recorded I, these are the pictures i've seen i've seen zephyr john twice i've seen noah song we've talked seen about everybody Chris else Murphy. talk about groom. i've seen jay groom i've seen zephyr john again i've seen aldo i've seen everyone um yeah jay groom all right well the first thing i know talked about all the other guys just say what's different if there's anything different with uh the first thing is jay groom's like he jack now like he, lost, he had to have lost 30 pounds yeah he's skinny like it's remarkable like it's i un- was, he, when he ran out on the mound i was stunned because i i mean i knew yeah. he was in good shape but I was not expecting this. I was skeptical, and then you sent me the photos, and I was just like, "Holy crap, that's not Jay Groom." Yeah, like he 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 was like always a big kid. Like I remember when he was drafted, you He's were like, like Henry Owens. Now that's not an eighteen year old. Yeah, like frame, like just you know, he, and that was fine. Like, but I remember he like there were some reports about his conditioning. Maybe mm-hmm. got away with him one year. Like he showed up a little bit soft in the body. And now that is not a thing. Like whatever he's been doing, keep going because it it, it it works. Um, yeah, he's he's lost. I would say like twenty to thirty pounds. Or I mean, he might not have lost that weight, like quote unquote, because maybe he put it back on his muscle. But you know what I mean with that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so physically he looks really good. Um, pitching wise, the stuff is not all the way back to the levels I, I saw like in his outing before he got hurt, which was the last one. Like his the wish uh, we were at mm-hmm. um his velocity he was like 92 to 94 he topped out at 95 versus i i could look back at my notes in that outing he was like 94 to 96 so the, he's the like spring training one yeah the spring training one so he's like he's like a grade on the fastball off still but that's like i don't i the 94 to 96 was like the first time i'd ever seen him like that so i think the 92 to 94 is more where he ends up pitching at the end of the day anyway mm-hmm. um <clears throat> excuse me but he did hit 95 
Um, fastball is still good. It's got, you know, some sink um, down in the zone. A little bit, It's got life. Um, I guess, like, I'll do the curveball, then I'll circle back to the delivery. His curveball was not good for the first inning, and I think it was funny. Um, I, like, I tweeted about it, like, how, you know, in the second and third inning, he found it once he started getting over it more. Mm-hmm. And uh, he had, I think, he, I can't remember who wrote it. It might have been Chris Smith. Um, I think it was Chris Smith. Chris was Smith was at, there, so probably. Was, he was at the game. He, he had some quotes from Groom where Groom talks about how, like, yeah, in the first inning, I was really struggling finishing my curveball. Then in the second and the third, I, you know, I really started getting over it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I know. So I, I wrote that. Good job. Um, Great job. But, uh, no, but it, it was pretty obvious because his the shape was just weird. Like for the first inning, it was like 82 to 84, which is harder than he usually throws it. And it looked more like a slider. And it was just he just was he just couldn't get over it. He was just releasing it on the side. And it was, so it had more like horizontal tilt. And then in the third inning, uh, second inning, he, he seemed to really get it. And this is there was a point where he reeled off like three straight or not in a row, but in like he had like three swing strikes with it in this inning, all against righties, and he was really getting that like depth at seventy nine to eighty one that you're used to. Mm-hmm. That is like the big hammer breaking ball that you're used to seeing in the past. And like I thought, I, I put it like it was it's a plus pitch still. Um, I've seen it better, and this is you know what his third outing back, so I assume I'm you know it should only get better from here. But the fact that he's already getting that snap back and like starting to get the feel back is is a really good sign um because obviously you know that's his true out pitch that's the separator pitch for him yeah it's um, nasty when it's on yeah he only threw like one change up maybe two uh so there wasn't a lot Whatever. i could do there and that's the d- development pitch that he's gonna have to make to, to reach his ceiling mm-hmm. but that's some I, for now i i like what they're doing where they're focusing on him getting back to the mm-hmm. fastball curveball which is what he's used to and what he's you know he, he knows and then they'll figure out the change up later which i think makes sense um and then circling back to his delivery like i said it, it looked pretty much the same. It's free and easy. Um, you know, the high leg kick it starts on the extreme third base side. Release point was inconsistent, as I said. Um, and his line was a little off at times. Like you line want when you plate, land, you mean? Yeah, yeah, when you land, you want that front foot pointing directly to the plate. But there were several times where his was like tilting or teetering towards the first base side. <laughs> so um, that's obviously not. Not I. It's something that I'm sure he'll work on and the, he'll get refined with more reps. So, it, so overall, it was I was impressed. You know, um, it's hard to say. Like you never know what you're going to expect from Tommy John pitchers yeah. like back because I've seen guys you know who stuff was better, at, like frankly, than before they had the surgery. And then you have the guys whose stuff is not the is not as good. Grooms is like pretty much the same. So that's that's a good sign. And. Yep. He just needs. A, a, we say it all the time. He just needs innings. Like he needs to be pitching in games and i think this was a really good experience for him because this was him like pitching leverage innings you know granted obviously it's not the greatest competition but there was as i said there was just a feel like on the field the way the kick the guys were taking it the playoffs these matter like these guys they're at the end of the day they're competitors and you could just feel like with each pitch like the guys in the dugout are living and dying by it you know what i mean like everyone's on the top step there's just when you get an out there's fist bumps like you know even if it's the second inning like i don't know it just felt different and i think for groom it's really good because they're not 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 necessarily the talent but simulating that like adrenaline rush is a good way to like kind of get him back into the swing of things and get him used to pitching those important innings and it's a good reward for the kid who's been rehabbing since may of last year he's worked worked his tail off i mean i made a joke to someone that like it looks like he's been doing nothing but cardio for 18 months he he worked i give him a ton of credit he worked his tail off like the get in the shape he is in and to be back with his stuff back where it is like you cannot ask for anything more from a guy who's rehabbing especially mm-hmm. considering how much time he's missed and, and i mean you know what i'll go there i mean for a guy who at the time he was drafted we hear all of these whispers about off-field problems and i i was with the scout in lowell this year who had scouted him in high school and was talking all this crap and it was like dude since they drafted him he's apparently been a model citizen and that's all i care about yeah yeah i mean that's why that's I why mean, like that stuff is all you need to know that stuff but at the end of the day like actions speak louder than words yeah. and like well you know you can people change and like once you're in the big leagues i mean he's done a great job since he joined the system and now he's healthy hopefully he can stay on the field because if he does like i mean he was we'll get to it in the rankings he was a tough one to rank for me because if yeah. he's healthy he's the number two prospect in the system probably yeah. for me but until i see him like it's just such a hedge because he's still thrown what under 100 pro innings. Like, yeah, I don't think I can put him ahead of Mata right now. So but, it's just it, it's tough. Yeah. But 
Yeah, if he uh, just to clarify, just to correct, it was in Aberdeen, not in Lowell. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, it's, scout talk to me. It's one of those things that like I just want to see him like just pitch like finish the season strong wherever it is. Um, you know, get a few more innings under your belt and then have a good off season and go into next season healthy and just pitch a full year. Or obviously he's not going to pitch a full year cause he's going to be on an innings limit, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, just stay healthy for the entire season. Right. That's, that's so, why I need to see that from him. Next yeah. Year. And so overall, just a couple notes, like groom, it was three innings, three strikeouts, one walk, um, mm-hmm. 39 pitches, 25 strikes, uh, seven swinging strikes on four, four on the curveball, three on the fastball. Um, three strikeouts, all were on curveballs. Uh, one lefty, two righties. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So it was a good outing. Um, well, the strikeouts on the curveball, like everyone in the park knows it's coming, and they still uh, didn't yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't throwing his changeup, so you knew it was coming. The first one, uh, first one was against a lefty. No, that was the second one. Um, the first one was against a lefty. Was uh, like eighty three mile an hour plus curveball that he just buried down down in the zone with like big time depth. Um, the next one was also swinging was, uh, was like in on a righty. Um, like he, he like front foot or sorry, he like, he got it right in on the guy's front foot. Um, so it swung. And then the final one was, where was the other strikeout? I probably missed one. Oh, I did miss one. Uh, the, sorry. What I just described were the last two. Mm-hmm which were both like both against righties. The one against the lefty was like a short uh, power breaking ball, like a with like shorter, like uh, what in the first inning that wasn't as good a breaking ball it was just the lefty lefty curve ball. So the guy had trouble with it. Gotcha. But yeah, no, it was just good to see him also like developing feel as the game goes on. That was like, that's something I like that you, that is hard to see in the shorter stints, but even over a three inning stint, if like, you know, the first inning comes out, he didn't really have it. Second and third, he starts to find it. That's what you want to see with guys. Right. Right. Yeah, they don't just abandon it because they don't exactly. really get it back. Because I've seen guys this year where that happens. Oh, I've I've seen guys throw pitches in the first. Yeah, then never throw it again. Yeah. But um, I think yeah. And then I mean, we're bearing the lead here. Like you, we we got to talk about YPA, um, which is what I'm going to call. <laughs> just, I don't know how to spell his last name. I'm looking on MILB by the way, and it's two L's. Yeah, like, then it's wrong. It's definitely yeah. one L because in in camp. I mean, unless he, like, hasn't told anyone until this year how to spell his name, which doesn't make sense because he was, like, I've seen at it. Miami-Dade. I've seen it college. both ways, like, the entire, like... Yeah, that, but I believe I it's 1L because that's what was on his jersey in spring training this year. Which makes sense. And uh, I'm going to be honest, I, I'm i not going by what the Lowell folks are putting on there. Yeah, well, no, but... I'm, that means looking, nothing yeah. to me. So, anyway, but, uh, so he was, he had six innings, 14 strikeouts, one. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Uh, is that good? It's just an absurd line, but the 12 in a row was one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen because he came in the game and struck out the first 12. And there was a point in the game where 11 consecutive batters struck out. Like, yeah, I I thought it was like 17 innings consecutive. No, like, because the Lowell hitters as well. Yeah, I thought it was like 17. Was it? No. Someone said 11, but anyways, I'll, I'll look it up. You, uh, I don't know. There was a stretch where Lowell struck out six times in a row, five times in a row. I think it was 17. This is captivating audio, but anyway, anyway, you talk about, um, yeah. So I think I, I, this is, I've seen him a bunch this year and like, I liked him in like, I think he's like, an organizational arm was what I kind of maybe like a fringy, like, like a depth arm because he throws a ton of strikes, which I like, um, which is why I, I said like, he's been successful there in my opinion. Like he just, he's really good command. Like, and he mix, mixes his pitch as well. He's got four pitches. Um, and yeah, like it just, it kind of plays in the low mind. It plays in like low. And my concern going forward is like, I don't think he has like an above average, or even a like a out pitch that is going to be able to get higher level hitters out. But I don't know. I mean, if he can mix like he is and the biggest thing for me was his fastball actually was, he was throwing harder than when I had seen before. Uh, when I saw him early in the year, he was like 88 to 90. It was just kind of like a meh fastball in this scouting. He was, I think this is part of it was the adrenaline, but he was like 90 to 92 topped out at 94. So he had more, he had a whole grade on his fastball more, which was interesting. Um, he just does a great job. Like he keeps his fastball down um yeah and it's just you know when you can locate up down and out at that level you're going to be successful obviously not to this level usually but yeah um but yeah he threw all of his breaking pitches change up curveball slider um i I like i like i don't know what they're all like it was 11 in a row 
was it 11 or okay yes they're all like similar to me they're all like 40 45s like maybe a, you can throw a 50 if you're generous that's that's what i saw in my game too um but yeah like the changeup was like 80 to 82 curveball was 67 to 75 slider was like 77 to 79 um he got a bunch he got what two four this is i don't know i I'm, can't count he had something like 12 13 <laughs> swing strikes so it wasn't so much that he he wasn't missing as many bats as you'd expect for like a 14 strike at out, outing if that makes sense mm, it right. was more he was just he was locating everything and they just you know the sequencing also when you're when you can throw all four of your pitches you have feel for all of them and you have like his like kind of pitch ability and, and mound you're press in the new york what? pen league and you're yes. in the new york pen league and you're in the new york pen league like when you can do that you can get away with like you can make a lot of things happen basically. And that's what he was doing. And it's like, he was just doing a good job keeping hitters off balance, you know, freezing them. They were expecting fastball, he's throwing curveball or vice versa. Um, the way I kind of like, actually, I don't think the curveball will play because of how slow it is, but in this level, like the ability to add or subtract really yeah. through hitters off, cause you know, you can, if you throw a curveball at 67, it looks noticeably different than one at 75. Mm-hmm. And so he did a good job of that. And, I just, I don't know. I was really impressed. Like I like the, it was just crisp. Everything was crisp. He was working quickly. The feel was there. Like he was getting, you could tell he was feeling it because it's one of the, he's getting the ball and he's immediately back on the mound. Like every pitch is just like a cycle. Like he's like a robot out there and he was just pounding the strike zone. Like, I don't know what the overall number was. I think it was like 90, 60, yeah, 61 pitches or 61 strikes out of 90. And I'm not sure. Like, it's a fringy profile for big league, but I've seen major league pitchers with worse stuff, frankly, pitching for the Red Sox this year. So, um, like, there's Don't be serious a, though. No, you haven't. I, you haven't seen big league pitchers? Are you kidding? Like, and I'm worse talking stuff than you, Sneal, Padron, Artiles. No, 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 no. Like, not not right now. Obviously, what I'm saying is like in the what what he like projects out to in the future. Oh, like, it's a fritzy okay. profile. Sorry. Like, yeah, no, no, That's sorry. Fair. I, I, yeah. yeah, not. I, I, didn't I mean, was like, confused. I, I didn't mean like right now. I meant like what he projects for. In because the there are like comments on Alex Spears' article this morning, like yesterday, that are saying like, well, they could sure use him right now, but don't bring him up yet because he needs to develop. But like, seriously, considering bringing him no, up. No, no, right not now. not like that. Like, just yeah. his like profile of you know like four like. 45 ish pitches yeah no that's for, that's like, fair four, that play out because of pitch ability yeah, yeah exactly and command like he's like if a he can, poor man's not even poor man's denny reyes comp to denny reyes like but the thing like the other thing he is going against him though, like physically he's like six foot like there's no projection in the frame no. he's younger than i thought which was good i thought he was like 22 23 he's only 21 i think or maybe he's still 20 so um yeah, he's 21. He's 21, um, but he, he, I mean, he turns 22 in November. He turns 22. So he's like behind the develop. Like he should have been in Greenville this year. I well, guess that's he did why they did, they did give him some starts there. And I think they wanted him to take and he but, just kind of didn't. So that's the thing. It's like, I just, I'm concerned about how, I think it's going to play fine in Greenville next year. Now that he's kind of like added the slider to I, worked on his changeup. He could also I, move quick. I bet. My concern is what's going to happen when he gets up to like Portland and yeah. starts facing more advanced hitters. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'd love to be proven wrong. But uh, right now, I think it's like a organizational profile is what I project with a chance to be like an emergency up and down guy, you know, like a 40 plus. Mm-hmm. So which for and you know what, if that's what he turns into, that's a heck of a draft pick. 22nd round, like 100K bonus or 50K or whatever it was. I don't remember exactly. Um, yeah. He got 75K. Sorry. And if that's what he turns into, that's a fantastic pick. So, you know, good for him. It was, as I said on Twitter, it was one of the best pitching performances I've, I've, I've ever seen from a Red Sox, like, minor leaguer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was really impressive. And then, yeah, kind of, like, transitioning to the offense. Um, Big Joe. Just get, get, get right Big to Big Joe. Can we just talk about Big Joe? That's all I want. I, I want to hear the ballad of Big Joe. I mean, Big Joe is fantastic. <laughs> I, is, he can hit. He, he, he can have a power. He just, like, he looks like he just goes up there and he just hacks, and I love it. And it's just like. For folks who are listening to this, here's what I want you to do is maybe I'll, I'll try and tell Joe, our, our Joe, pod, big podcast Joe, um, to link to the video from last night's walk-off. Watch his swing path. It's so long. It's a ground ball, but it's long and it's basically straight up. Yeah, he like <laughs> he has like 
he has like a softball swing, which I he love. I mean, and he just, I, I'm convinced I didn't ask. I would love to know how long a bat he uses. Cause I'm pretty sure he uses like a it's 30 huge. inch bat. It's like, huge. and he's like not the biggest, I mean, okay, he's big, but he's not like the tallest guy. He's like six foot, but he's, you know, he's a big boy. Um, but he's just one of those guys that like, it's fun to watch, like fun to watch him hit. Cause when he makes contact in the air, the ball goes a very long way. And that's what he did last night. Like, he got up there, he got a fastball like in and he just, you could tell he knew it immediately. Cause he did the, he had a nice little bat flip, just turned on it and just and yoinked, two, yeah. Yeah, yoinked it over the left center field wall. And so that was, yeah, like, I think it's like, you know, again, it's like, it's like an organizational profile, but he's going to be fun to watch. You know, he's good for the memes and uh, <laughs> <clears throat> like, you never know with those guys, you know, if you can hit, you know, people will figure you, you they'll find a way to play or find a place to play for you. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> find a place for you to play. Exactly. Sorry. I'm having some fine. trouble struggling. Um, the yeah, no, he's a, uh, he's like for again, where they got him 19th round pick, like you need guys like that. So yeah, so that's uh, big Joe. Um, do, do you agree with me that he's more agile than you would give him credit for looking at him? Not that he is yeah. in fact agile, but no, definitely. He's, he's, he's agile for size is what yeah. I would say. Um, talk about the other guys. Uh, Gilberto Jimenez, he had, did his thing, hit, walk. Yeah, at base. this point we've talked about Lowell so much, like just um, if something's different or something particularly noteworthy. Oh, well, there was uh, Cameron Cannon. I'm, for his last 30. I'm getting concerned. Okay. Like I know it's his first season, and he obviously played like the whole – like. He had the whole college year too, so he's probably a little worn down and tired. Mm-hmm. Um, but there just there's some red flags that you don't expect to see from the like a tallest guy. I yeah, that's the biggest thing. Like I've now like it's gotten to the point where I mark down when he doesn't swing at the first pitch. Yeah, it's so rare, and it's just when he's for a guy who's second base only and not like going to be an above average defender there, that's a lot of pressure on the bat already. So, I mean, I'm willing to, obviously, you know, this is the first season. That's why like next season is going to be a big one, but they're just, they're just some red flags that I'm going to need to see like addressed over the off season and going into next year for me to be comfortable. And he's going to be a tough one for me to rank this off season for that reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think the other guy worth mentioning a uh, couple is I saw three guys I had not seen this year. Uh, Roldani Baldwin, mm. uh, Sedan, Raphael, and Matthew Lugo. Raphael. And um, Baldwin was funny. Baldwin hit a bomb. <laughs> Just absolutely. Well, so let's, let's get the backdrop. Baldwin has been out all year with – looked like some kind of ankle or lower leg fracture that he suffered, I think, during spring training. Um, and he's been in Fort Myers rehabbing that, and he started his rehab assignment in the same game as Jake Room in the Gulf Coast League, got promoted to Lowell with the whole crew of guys that got promoted to Lowell where he was continuing his rehab. So he's basically a at least a high-A player playing in yeah. the New York Penn League. But, but I that think said, he's also rehabbing. rusty because he hasn't played all year continue um yeah sorry and he just kind of did roll donnie baldwin things like he struck out twice and he had a home run it's like (laughs) (laughs) kind of what he does how do you look behind Um, the plate because that's the question we always get it's super rough like i was going to talk about it more in the next game because it was more evident there um he just like pop catch both yeah he caught both um wow pop, pop times i got 208 and 212 so it's like a blow average arm slow release um arm kind of lacks carry um and then just the receiving skills are still really rough. Uh, he, he, he stabs at the ball. Like he doesn't really, he doesn't let it get deep and like leave his glove there. He's always attacking it and trying to like get out. So his glove position is very strange, which costs pitchers strikes. And the more concerning thing is he has a lot of trouble, like controlling balls in the dirt. And that actually almost hurt them in the night in the game uh, yesterday because the, the, the uh, go ahead run at one point moves three to two scored off a wild off a, uh, Aldo Ramirez, we'll get to it there, but Aldo Ramirez basically struck out two guys back to back with a guy on third, no outs. Then he threw like a breaking ball in the dirt and it was, and back and twice in the inning, it just, it hit Baldwin's chest protector and went like 20 feet to his right. And if you're a catcher, you need to be smothering that pitch and having it, you know, knocking it down right in front. And he just doesn't, his body. 
Sorry. his body position is just not there yet. So I say, especially I, I, at his age, like, yeah, I just, I don't think he's a catcher. So he's 23. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, the home run, I mean, he's got big time pop though. Like he doesn't get cheated at the plate and it's just, yeah, I don't know about the catcher part. Um, Raphael, I guess I'll just kind of like lump in both games cause he played both Lugo only played yeah, one. Just talk about those two cause we're um, at 35 minutes. Yeah, we got time. Relax. Um, Raphael, uh, I, 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 he's interesting. Um, he's super small. Like mm-hmm. he's like five, seven, five, eight, probably 150 pounds. Okay. There's some projection, but I'm not sure how much because he's just not a big – like it's not a big frame. It doesn't look like a frame that's going to add, you know, like 40, 30 pounds or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's athletic, twitchy, uh, plus runner. I got him several times, um, plus uh, run times for like, you know, four two zero ish from the right side. Uh, his swing is – is he's got this long like power hitter swing, which is kind of funny because he's really small. Um which is, but he has like good hand. He's got good back control. Like he makes it work for him, which is good. Um, with two strikes though, he noticeably shortens up. Like he crouches in his stance and he has, he's really just like a slappy hitter with two strikes. So I guess, I mean, that's you, cause his, his like early account swing would never, you can't do that with two strikes. Like yeah. he would just get exposed. So it's good to see that he's making adjustments in that regards, but he's going to have to tighten up the approach as he develops. He also hit for a fair amount of power in the Gulf coast league. He hit six home runs in 41 games. Oh, right. You can see why, like he takes like a power hitters hack mm-hmm. with no, with no one on, or uh, with, uh, like early counts. So I was just going to bring up his stats. So that was, um, yeah, that was interesting. Um, you know, at, I didn't see, he didn't do much at third base. Frankly, he like barely got anything hit to him, but at shortstop, it's like, I think it's passable. I think it's like a super utility profile for me. That's likely what he ends up as if he's going to be a big leaguer. Um, you know, the arm is like average ish. Uh, his actions are pretty good. He's a little vertical fielding and he had like a throw a pretty costly throwing error, uh, yesterday where it's just like, he gets it. And I don't know, he tried to like just over rely on the arm rather than setting his feet on the throw. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I like his hands. They work well. Uh, he's, as I said, he's athletic, like he moves well, he's got good range, but it's just not like, it's not all there at shortstop for me to be like, you know, a long-term option at shortstop, which is why I think, I don't know. I don't know if you can bring up like how many different positions he's played this year. Well, like but, it was interesting because in the DSL last year, he primarily played third base. Really? Interesting. Which is very strange given his body. Like you would not expect yeah, he does a 5'7", 150 guy to be playing third. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm actually in looking – someone mentioned this to me. His splits are interesting. He had almost all of his power off lefties. I don't know if you noticed that. No. He had five of his six home runs off lefties and 36 at bats. And he hits righty? He hits righty. He was 361, 425, 778 oh, against right, right. lefties, 214, 301, 316 against righties. Okay, fielding. Here it is. Okay, this year he played hide partial rows. He played short third and second, and he short split third. them almost evenly. Makes sense. Um, that's 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 what I oh, would. Oh, no, he didn't play any short this year, did he? Really? Oh, no, no he, played- he did. Sorry, he didn't play any in, in, in um, Lowell. He played, yes, he, he played short last night. Well, I mean, in the regular season. Oh, yeah, obviously. Because yeah, they, yeah. I mean, because they also had three other shortstops in the roster, yeah, yeah, which yeah. makes sense. But he, yeah, yeah uh, I mean, he, in the Gulf Coast League, 13 starts at second, 14 at third, and 11 at short. Which makes sense. They're that's, moving him around. That's what, that's what he is. I don't, I don't think there's like, I don't, I don't see like an everyday projection. Um, just mm-hmm. he's just not big enough and I just don't see a carrying tool, but I think he could be someone who's like, it's like a utility profile. You know, he's pat, he's like an average defender at three positions. You he, he could probably play the outfield too. Um, plus run, plus run. you know, yeah, he hit a little bit, maybe a little pop off lefties. So he's a, he's a, he's a nice prospect. He's someone who I think will be in the top 30. Um, yeah, we'll move him up. Yeah, we but need to get eyes on him. It's just yeah, he was just <laughs> someone we had seen, so it was good to see, get like two games with him. Where is he right now? Right now, he's thirty four. Like he's a, he, he's a top thirty. He's a top thirty prospect for you. Um, for me, yeah. Uh, and then the other guy, I, I got one game of Matthew Lugo, um, and so it's like super small sample. You know, the usual caveats. Like I'm not going to put a projection on him. I'll just kind of talk about what I liked. Um, I like the frame is fantastic. Like it's like the prototypical, like projectable build. 
Um, I think he's listed at 6'1", 180. I, I don't think he's 180 pounds. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see what they have on the Lowell roster. Actually, I'm interested now. Oh, he's just at 185 on the lower roster, too. Interesting. I don't think he's that big. He's skinnier than that to me. Um, so I think he can put on size and still be able to stick at shortstop. I like his athleticism. Um, he, uh, I, I, yeah, I said skinny athletic projectable frame. Um, he hits from vertical, slightly open stance with a leg lift. He needs to add strength, though. That was the biggest thing that stood out to me. Um, he's got quick hands, bat drags a little bit because of that lack of strength. Um, I liked how he tracked the ball at the plate though. Like there aren't a lot of 18 year olds who do the whole, you know, watch it into the glove thing, which was nice to see. Um, and he, uh, he walked his first at bat and good at bat didn't expand the zone. Then he struck out his next two at bats, um, with some trouble with recognizing spin, which you'd expect for a kid his age. Um, in the field, I got a pretty good look though. He had a couple plays. I like the hands. They worked well. Um, he's pretty fluid in the field. He had a really nice diving stop to his left. Um, that, uh, with the infield in where he couldn't get the run at the plate, but he still was able to get an out. Um, but he also looked, he had one play where he had to throw on the run and I liked his footwork was good. He uh, looked really comfortable, like covering ground. And then, you know, that transition, which is the one the young guys tend to struggle with when you're fielding on the run and you have your glove out in front of you, like your left foot, and then you have to transition to your throwing hand and then get your feet set to throw. He did a really fluid, like effortless, um, play with that. So I liked what I saw out of him in the field. Um, he's someone I just like, it's going to be, take some time. It's raw, but there are things to like there. So that was good to see just to even get one game of him before instructs was nice. One thing that I really want to see this off season, like I started making a spreadsheet with every player I've seen I, between the three of us, you, me and Mike, because Mike's seen, I think a little more Pawtucket than you have. I doubt there are many players we haven't seen that have been in Lowell or higher. There's only got to be a handful, and they're probably relievers. I know who some of them are because one of them is Brendan like, Salucci. Yeah, my arch nemesis in terms of someone I've gone like games where I've I've like mapped out days when I think he's pitching and he just never pitches. <laughs> well, we've heard he, he's up to 97 too. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, the only because I'm looking at Lowell, the only pitchers in their bullpen I haven't seen this year are Salucci and Scroggins. Yeah, the new draft. Well, well, and, I've seen Wendell. Yeah, yeah, I've seen Wendell, and then Jorge Rodriguez. I haven't seen either, but um, we I've heard a lot on him. So okay, um, yeah. yeah, looking, yeah, he's the only one who, and he didn't even start the year in Lowell, so I don't count him. But yeah, we've done it. We've we've covered a lot. We've been able to see a lot this year, which is nice. Yeah, um, yeah, and so I think then I guess let me talk a little bit about the other game too because there were a couple of different things with Zephyr John that are worth mentioning and yeah, uh, I was Aldo. throwing the slider again yeah so I, I saw him I've seen him like three times now which was good because the first time I think we talked about it he only threw the changeup. he didn't throw any breaking balls and that's why I need to update his report note to self um in this outing, he threw a lot of sliders and he threw all four of his pitches and the slider was I see what they saw. Like he threw one, like really good plus slider, like, you know, hammer depth, um, like just devastating, uh, wipe out slider. And, um, yeah, so that was good to see. It was like 84 to 87. Um, I think it's a plus pit. It's got plus potential and it, it, a little inconsistent. Like he threw a he threw one flat one that, um, led to a run, like just hung against the lefty. Mm-hmm. But, um, he threw a couple of good ones, got a couple swing strikes. So that was good. Um, the biggest thing for me is his changeup is a lot better than I thought it was going to be like, and the noteworthy thing, this outing was the first time I saw him, it was like 83 to 86. And I guess he's been working on it all season. Mm -hmm. And now he, he's throwing it like 80 to 82. And when you're, he was up to 97, this outing, he touched 97 once 96, like three or four times, mostly like 93 to 95. If you're sitting like 93 to 95, so like plus to better velocity, and you're throwing a change up at 80 to 82, that separation is devastating. No like, physical mechanical change or anything like that? No. I, I think it's same like a arm grip. speed. It's same arm nice. speed. Like it's just a really – he threw a couple really good ones. Um, like split like, you know, just like started right – right. I'm doing my hand motion because, of yeah, course, no one can see. Because it's a visual podcast. But it was one of those, you know, you know, it's right to – it's looking at like normal fastball, Falls like movement, the and then just – Bam, diving like down and down and in on a righty or down and away from a lefty. And for him, he's going to need the changeup because his slider lefties get a pretty good look at it. Something I noticed, like 
lefties were getting some good swings on it. So he needs a pitch to be able to get out lefties, especially if he's going to stick in a rotation, which you want because like he's got that worker workhorse workhorse Jesus starters build. You know, six five, like two twenty five, two thirty. He's athletic. Mm-hmm. So he's going to need to keep developing that changeup. And like, if that changeup, I think it's like an average, it, I think I would say like 50, 55 right now, if he can roll out like a plus, the better fastball, a plus slider and that changeup, that's like a mid rotation starter right there. You know, if you're, if you have three up average to better pitches, like with two of them being plus, yeah, that's a mid rotation starter. So he's really interesting to me. And the fact that he's already started to develop both his, like his uh, secondary pitches. And then that's not even mentioning that he has a curveball that it's like, it's like a below average pitch, but it's still like usable when sequenced correctly. Right. So we're talking about like a six, 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 five, six, six righty with four pitches with, fe- with feel for all of them, could throw them all for strikes and, you know, at least a separator secondary with the slider and then another developing one with the changeup. Like that's a really interesting arm. So it's just good to see him kind of using all his pitches and putting that together. And the fact that he could dial up to like, he's got velo when he needs to, because the 97 came in his third inning last pitch of the game. Um, when he, I think there was a runner on, I want to say runner on second base and two outs in it, like a playoff game. And the fact that he could reach back for 97, like it's in there. It's just, Mm -hmm. you know, he, so which is why I know a lot of people have said like in the bullpen could be really good, Play but up, yeah. yeah, so I can see that, but you know, I, I'm giving him every chance to start based on what I've seen. Hmm. Um, and then Aldo Ramirez is the other one. And he's someone who like, I think he's flown a little under the radar nationally. He won't just come this off season. Trust well, he's me. He's already in our top 20. Yeah, well, not for us. Cause, well, yeah, obviously not for us. Cause we are going, we're seeing all this stuff, but um, like nationally, He's not someone who gets a lot of pub, but he will start getting it once people start talking to scouts about the system because he is like legit. Mm-hmm. And um, the thing that was noteworthy to me is I finally got a good look at his changeup, <laughs> which is something I've seen him twice this year before. And I think he threw like four changeups total in both those pitches, in both those outings. But it was something where scouts coming out of uh, who had seen him like extended in spring training, like we're like, yeah, changeups is best secondary pitch. So it was good to finally get a look at it. And, um, it's, it's like, it's a work in progress. Um, but I can see like it flashes potential. Definitely. Uh, he throws a good arm speed. It's harder than, um, Zephyr Johns. It's like 85 to 88, um, mostly like 86, 87. Um, and like some of, sometimes it just looks like a fastball. He took something off, but when he gets it, it like, it's got like, it's almost like a splitter. Like it's, it's cause of how hard he throws it. It's got like that late dive and, um, some sink and like, it got, it got, I don't know how many, one, two, three, four, three swinging strikes yesterday, all against lefties, which is another thing. Like it, same thing with Zephyr John. It's right easy to be a starter. It's so much easier when you have a change up to get lefties out. And, um, his outing overall, like he threw, I think it was three and two thirds inning. He struck out eight guys and he got a bunch of, so it was two, four, six, eight, 10. It's like 16, 17 swinging strikes and three and two thirds innings. Oh yeah. He was like missing bats left and right. Um, so, and it was with all his pitches, you know, there were, well, I'll actually count it now. There was one, two, three, six with the fastball, five with the curveball. And then four with the changeup, maybe. So he's like, he, he can miss bats with all three of his pitches. Um, you know, he's eight, the kid's 18 years old and he's already up to 95. You know, he'll sit like 91 to 93, 90 to 93. Fastball's got some life. Um, you know, his, I like his delivery. You know, he repeats it well. It's pretty low maintenance. Like, it's not a lot of effort to it. Um, arm action has a little little stuff going on behind, but nobody's arm action is clean these days. He's athletic. He lands on line of the plate consistently, like repeats his delivery well. Uh, curveball like seventy seven to seventy nine. He can really he's got good feel for it. Really can snap it off. Like there's a lot to like with someone like him. He's bigger than he's listed too. And to be doing what he's doing as an eighteen year old, like his his walk rate was absurdly low. Like I think he yeah he walked sixteen guys in sixty one innings. Mm-hmm. so struck out 63 and 61 like to do that as an 18 year old in Lowell is very impressive and he's someone who I think has like you can dream on like you know another another guy you can dream is like a potential mid-rotation starter just showing like how deep their staple of arms is in Lowell that you know we're talking about Zephyr John 
and Ramirez as mid rotation starters. We even talked about Noah Song, Chris Murphy, guys like that. So yeah, yeah. I mean it's with this pitching staff. I mean pitching in the system, and that was kind of Alex Spears' point in his article that he wrote yesterday uh, as we, re- we record this. I mean I could see a top ten in the very near future that's got seven pitchers. I mean, right now there's one, two, three, four, five. Chatham's at 10. I could see us moving someone above him. I mean, the hitters that I definitely think are top 10 right now, I guess six, because Casas is definitely number one. You've got Dahlbeck, Duran, Hilberto. But yeah. other than that, I mean. I think it'll be four, six will be my split. Yeah, I think that sounds about right, and I could see um, next but year. If you, if but if you, expanded, if you expanded out to 20, like, or 15, frankly, like, you could – make a case that everything from like 10 to 15 is pitchers. Mm, you could like maybe Lugo in there, but like, yeah. yeah so Decker, I could see there's just, there, they yeah. just have a staple of low minors arms that are interesting. And like, yeah. we will probably should mention talk about Salem a little bit now, like well, even in I'm Salem. Do, yeah. Yeah. Salem, you've got like guys like Thad Ward there too. So yeah, it was just Lowell. It's an exciting team. Good luck to them in their uh, final series. Um, good look. It was a good, good, good look to see some like playoff baseball and kind of get to see how the guys handled it. Um, you could tell with the hitters too, the guys who had like been in that situation before, like Steven Scott was like up there taking professional at bats and like, you know, just turning on like 86 mile an hour sliders in on his hands for doubles to tie the game late. Like, cause you know, he's someone who went Vanderbilt obviously is used to like situations like that. Then there yeah, are other guys who played are, in the college world series this year. Yeah, I know. Um, and then there are no, other no, guys. I'm not telling you. I'm telling the I listeners. Know. They beat Michigan for the listeners. That's why I'm better. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, I wasn't there. But, yeah, versus there are other guys who are, you know, a little over aggressive. Um, I guess just quickly, sorry, last guy. Nick Decker, good good night for him. Uh, he had two singles, two walks in this the game. This is game three we're talking about. Game three. And it was just nice to see him, like, being patient because he's been pretty aggressive in the times I've seen this year. So I still, I'm a Nick Decker fan. I still believe. So uh, that was good to see. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Moving on to Salem. I mean, I, we're, we didn't have anybody there obviously. So I guess we'll just talk about, we should have gotten Mike on because he watched the first two games. Um, no MILB TV in for Wilmington uh, for game three, but I think uh, the Salem fee is pretty good, isn't it too? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I mean, I said this on Twitter, Melanie Newman's been killing it this year. Um, with her calls, so um, definitely an entertaining call to watch as well, which is always good. I mean, we've got some pretty good broadcasters in the system between her, Mike Antonellis, um, the guys up in Pawtucket are always good. Uh, but yeah, looking, I mean, game one was 8-3 to three win. They just smoked Daniel Lynch, um, UVA product, who was a first-round pick, right? Yeah, he's like yeah. a top 50, he's top, a top 75 prospect, uh, too. Based on what I saw, he's like 75-ish range. Yeah, he's top 100, uh, though. Let's he's definitely that. top 100, consensus top 100 prospect. And they hit for the cycle in the first four hitters. I guess that's good. Um, just really kind of spread it all out. Uh, well, we should mention that they got some reinforcements, like Tristan Costas. Yeah, it's, well, it's and, funny. Yeah. You look at the lineup, and like I saw Salem a fair amount this year. Um, looking at the lineup right now, it's Basic, it's like half Greenville guys is how I look at it because in the lineup right now are Devlin Granberg, Cole Cottom, Tristan Casas, um, and Grant Williams who were all in Greenville for most of the season. Um, but yeah, and it's kind of funny because like Jagger Rusconi got promoted to Portland literally just to make room for the Greenville guys. I saw that. That was oh, that's, harsh. that's a tough one. Yeah, that's tough. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, the opening night, the whole lineup hit, basically. Everyone except Tristan Casas had a hit, which was interesting. Yeah, um, I mean, but he's like, yeah, that makes I sense. don't care. Yeah. Um, yeah, three hits each from Benj, uh, Garrett Bench, Devlin Granberg, Keith Curcio, and Cole Cottom. Um, a couple hits each from Victor Acosta and Tanner Nishioka. Uh, so, you know, just kind of an all-across-the-lineup win. Uh, starter was Emmanuel DeJesus, went five and two-thirds strong. Um yeah, five Ks, three runs on seven hits, no walks. That's an Emmanuel De Jesus line. Yep. Johan Ibar yeah. with two, yeah. two scoreless, and uh, you, Johan Martinez cleared it with uh, or uh, finished it with a scoreless inning. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ibar and his two innings walked two and struck out one, which feels sounds like about right. It's very Johan Ibar line. Um, night two, they won five to two. Again, got up early. Um, Thaddeus Ward was the story there. Six strong. 
uh, or six plus, uh, three hits, one run, which was he allowed the one runner he faced in the seventh to reach, and then Logan Browning came in and gave up a home run. So it was an inherited runner. So at the time he left, it was six innings, three hits, no runs, four walks, seven K, or three walks, three seven walks, Ks, yeah. Because then he walked the one batter. Um, but four walks, seven Ks, I mean, we'll, we'll see if he gets it, but Ward's my pick for pitcher of the year in the system. It's um, going to be, there's a lot of guys who have like, it's a two horse race if you narrow it down to guys who realistically should win it, but there are a lot Ward of guys. And, um, the Aussie. Yeah, Daniel. Daniel McGrath. Um, yeah, I mean, very different situations in their first and seventh years in the system or sixth year. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Ward, I mean, has been a, he's a top 10 prospect now. Um, he's been a revelation. He's produced all year in a way that, like, we've had years where no one has the kind of season that Dad Ward has. I, yeah, really, I remember the year that we gave Jake Cozart as a reliever the Pitcher of the Year award. Um, but, yeah, so in that night, too, let's see. Oh, Casas had a double, so he recovered. He had two hits, yeah. Two hits. Um Another Tyler player Esplin. who had two hits was Tyler Esplin, and both of his hits landed beyond the outfield fence. Which Generally is hel- good. It's hilarious because, like, he got completely overshadowed, and he had two home runs at a playoff game when he got promoted to this level literally in the last week of the season yeah. because they were going to make the playoffs. Um, but, hey, good for Tyler Esplin. I mean, he's, he's – you know, I, I got a brief look at him in Greenville. Uh, he's definitely got pop. He's always had pop. Um Good to see him as a guy that they're comfortable moving up. Um, you know, he, he it's good to see him produce like this. And like you said, you learn. Like he's always and, been hurt too. Yeah, he's had he's had some injury issues, not as much as Tyler Dearden, who it's easy to kind of confuse the two of them. Um, but I think Esplin's kind of separated himself from Dearden at this point. Yeah, in a positive way, um, he's still kind of a forty-ish range guy for me, and my that I got from my limited look when he was in Greenville, but. Yeah. You know, he was the story of this game. Also, a couple of hits from Ryan Fitzgerald, who's, you know, played well all year. Um, and then in night three, last night, a tough loss for them. Uh, by the time this gets released, they'll, at least game four would have happened because game four is tonight, game five is tomorrow. But um, in game three, they lost three to two. Um, Wilmington walked it off in the ninth on a freaking safety squeeze. Oh, God. I like, love playoff what? baseball. Um, but yeah, uh, the starter was AJ Politi. Who wait? He's going by. He's going by AJ. He's now? going by. He's apparently gone by AJ, and it just hasn't been put anywhere. Um, Tight. Yeah, I like it. He's I like AJ. Kid. AJ feels very Italian. I mean, like his almost a, feels more Italian than Andrew. I didn't realize how yeah, good his stats he's were been. Year. I was just about to say he has been filthy since they moved him into the rotation. Um. I'm I'm trying to pull this up on baseball reference so that we can get the splits. Um, I don't know how he's going to stick with the rotation with that delivery. but Oh, no, I know. And, and, and that's something that I've, has been acknowledged because um, it's just violent as hell. Yeah. But, I mean, he, he, he had his first start in a doubleheader, so it almost doesn't even count, on July the 12th. Okay. Or actually, do they have a starter split? Yeah. Okay, because then he went back into the bullpen and kind of was like, meh, for a little bit. But um, this doesn't include this playoff start, but as a starter... I, I have it with this playoff start. Oh, you do? Yeah, 21 and a third innings. Is that what you have or no? Um, as a starter... Where the freak is it? No, that's that's without the playoff start. Oh, is it? Okay, because yeah. I'm 20, looking... 21 and a third innings, 25 strikeouts to 8 walks... And only eight hits. He's given yeah. up six runs, three of them earned, one home run. 127 yeah. ERA compared to a 440 ERA out of the bullpen. Well, because even out of the bullpen, he still had strikeouts. He's 71 Ks in 57 innings. Yeah, strikeouts his strikeouts are, are actually but... down because he was striking out 11.1 per nine in the bullpen and, and 10 point, which 10 makes, and a half. Which makes sense, though, because when you're pitching the rotation. Right, like, but yeah. he's walking fewer guys. I mean, part of it is just that he kind of struggled at points this year. Like there's a stretch from like late May through mid like mid to late June, where he was just walking too many guys, but and he kind of had another stretch like that later in the year. But yeah, man, I mean Andrew Politi, I mean he was our our player of the week uh, for like the second to last week of the year. 
uh, our pitcher of the week, he like had two starts. We win nine innings and allowed no hits. Um, so he basically had a two start, no hitter. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's been balling out. I mean, since let's see. Yeah. Since that start on July the 12th, including the relief outings in there in 37 innings, he's allowed 11 runs, eight earned on 20 hits, 15 walks, which is still way too high, but 48 strikeouts in 37 innings. Throwing what mid to high nineties, I think we said. I've seen him up to ninety seven. I want to say. Yeah, we got a report on him during that time that he was. He was up to ninety six. Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, ninety four to ninety seven, averaging ninety six. Yeah, yeah, because I've um, seen him up to ninety seven out of the bullpen. Yeah, but and he threw the he threw the fastball forty seven times, thirty one of them for strikes, eleven swing and misses in this one game. Yeah. So I, I think, and like, if you look at our report, like I said, like fastball slider combination show major league quality, but command yeah. and delivery limit upside. Like we liked him last year. You, yeah, you saw him and you liked him, and I saw him in camp and really liked him. Yeah, so it's just, I mean, if it works, like I, he's someone I'm interested to see next year in spring training. Like someone what are they will be do with him. Yeah, yeah. Do you try and do you try and calm that delivery down and start? Do you know, I don't think you do. Do you know what I think he could be perfect for? Opener. Yep. <laughs> Maybe. As like but a two inning we'll guy. This will be a this will be a, a conversation we'll have during the off season of um what what makes a good opener. Because that's not even something that I know that I have my head around yet. I'm team opener, so I like it. I don't know. Yeah. Um oh, so I didn't even talk about in the playoff game, Politi went four innings um through eighty four pitches, so he's still not on a super long deep pitch count. But four innings, four hits, no runs, one walk, seven strikeouts. I mean, that'll do the trick. It's also um, not very efficient. He's throwing 84 pitches in four innings. It's not efficient, but it's, I mean, he's also striking guys out, which is part of the inefficiency. Right. For sure. Um, the <laughs> problem was on the other side of the mound was Chris Bubich. He's good. Is good. Uh, former. Like uh, first round, second round pick out of Stanford. Competitive balance round A pick out of Stanford. Stanford. Um, he went seven innings on Salem and allowed one run on two hits and struck out 11. So he, the problem was the pitcher on the other side was shoving too. Seems good. Yeah. Um, Salem actually took a 2-1 lead in the eighth um, on a – Wild pitch, right? Wild pitch by reliever Colin Snyder in which Tyler Esplin scored. Um, the problem was in the ninth when uh, D- Dominic Labruto – we've talked about this, how the Red Sox seem to love – like leaving guys in when they're relievers. They tried to get a third inning out of Labruto. Um, and Labruto, let's see here. Yeah, bottom nine. Uh, Have you singles, read the, like, the game log? I've got it right here, yeah. Yeah, it's Single, hilarious. single, sack no, bunt. No, 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 no. Single, bunt, single, which oh. I'm guessing was a sacrifice. They screwed up. Yeah, well, singles on a bunt ground ball, the pitcher Dominic Labruto. Sacrifice, bunt, hit by pitch, bunt. Well, so sacrifice, they- bunt that wound up being just a bunt single. Then right. a sack bunt. Then um, a hit by pitch, then a bunt again. So they bunted. Um, well, the, no, 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 no. You're, you're okay. S- single, bunt, single, sacrifice, bunt. Labruto comes out. They bring in Andrew Schwab. Yeah, wild pitch, hit wild by pitch. Wild pitch that allows the tying run to score. Hit by pitch, which doesn't even matter. And then a bunt. And then a safety squeeze bunt. Yeah, it's just a cra- they, they bunted three straight times. I mean, I only know it's a safety squeeze because that's what – Wilmington called it. I don't know if. Yeah. So, but basically, they won the game with that. Maybe it was a legit squeeze. After the first hit, they didn't put the ball out of the infield, and they won the game. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Minor league baseball, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, that kind of stinks. But we'll see if Salem. Uh, last night they took an L, but tonight we'll see if they bounce back, as Big Sean might say. Yeah, and I guess we we'll would say like Just so. Salem Sean, series right? is best of five. Um, if yeah, they, Salem series is best of five, right? If they so win they tonight, need to win uh, one of the next two, both in yeah, Wilmington. I was about to say they're both away, and if they win tonight, they will be playing. I don't know who. Do we know? Yeah, I think it's over. Because the it other game was the um, other series is over. It was. Oh, they didn't play last night. Oh, the other canceled. series is. Why? Where's the other series? Yeah, why isn't the other series showing up? I'm really confused. Because MILB.com is terrible. It's Down oh, East Fayetteville. It's Down East Fayetteville, and they probably, they probably scheduled a round of hurricane. Delayed. Well, because they, they played been, a doubleheader on the first night. They're playing a doubleheader tomorrow, too, the okay. 7th. So they probably oh, no, scheduled today. it. 
So they play a doubleheader today. Okay, they scheduled it that way around the hurricane then. Yeah, that makes sense then. Yeah. So they'll play, who knows, TBD, because yeah. the, they have a doubleheader today, and then if they have to, they play again tomorrow. Who who are these affiliates of? I don't recognize Down East them. is Houston, I want to say. You look up Down East, I'll look up Fayetteville. Yeah. Oh, wait, none of these links work. Down East is Texas. Right, I did know that. And uh, Down East, no, yeah, Down, oh, I clicked Down East. I thought that was the Woodpeckers. It is not. Um, Fayetteville is Houston. I knew one of them was Houston. Because, of course. Yeah, so. Okay, well, yeah. So that's, that's and then. Playoff baseball. Yeah, and then, sorry, Lowell plays Brooklyn, who is the Mets affiliate tonight. And I'm interested to see if Brooklyn is keeping Chad Lowry in the lineup after his heroics in the last series. (laughs) Old friend Jed Lowry. Come back to haunt us. Yep. So that's, um, he apparently said he needed more time in the minors, right? That was I yeah, saw I that so. this week. Um, so that's the, that's that's the playoff wrap up. Yeah, playoffs. We are we'll, we are in fact talking about playoffs, Jim Mora. We will we will update about it in the future. Um, yeah, uh, Ward Politi. Um, I guess I don't know when this is going to come out, but if it's before Sunday and you're in the Boston area, you can go go to Lowell's final do game it. of the season. One Potentially o'clock. the only Boston area playoff action this year. Likely. Likely the only playoff action this year. Um, and let's talk about some rankings, and then we'll close this out. Uh, the new rankings went up for September. These are not the official year-end rankings. These are the September rankings updates. Um, we're going to have our, our year-end rankings after Ian gets down to fall instructs, which we'll, we'll talk about instructs on the next podcast, hopefully, on the next episode. Um, but, yeah, uh, new rankings came out, Ian. Looking at changes here to, to focus on, I mean, the top five stayed the same. Uh, Jay Groom was kind of tough. Was he rehabbing yet? He was, right? Ian, I'm asking you a question. Yes, he was. He was, yeah. He had already thrown in a game. He had th- well, well, that that would be the same thing, yes. Oh, rehabbing game, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so our top five, actually our top seven stayed the same. Oh, I guess not stayed the same because... Yeah, we have differences too. Like Darwin's I mean, and Hernandez graduated. graduated. Yeah. Um, so that's why Groom moved up to five. Um, the top seven is how I have it. You have Groom above Jaron Duran. Yeah. I'm t- I don't think Jaron. Yeah. I'm t- like, I don't know. I mean, Jaron Duran's still, I mean, I, I think you're underplaying how well he got his act together in Portland eventually. I don't, but I don't, just, the upside's just not there for me compared to Groom. But it's, it's, I think he's got a better chance of being a major league regular because the thing with Groom for I me don't. is the, well, it's the injury questions. He's yet to yeah, have he, a season in which he stays healthy. I agree with that, but I'm not sold Duran's a regular, so. Like, I mean, I think there's a chance, but like, I, just, I think he could be. I don't think he's going to be like I don't, more than a one I, or two win like, player in that role. We're talking a guy. We're talking a guy with no power who's like you know twenty twenty two percent strikeout rate, eight percent walk rate. So it's not like a huge on base guy. Yeah, um, but speed, I would like to see the speed will play. The speed will play, but I don't know. I just like I'm not entirely sold on the bat in an everyday role. And I just think Groom's upside is too much to pass, especially in the rotation as a lefty. Yeah, I mean, that sounds right to me. Um, if I could just get the stupid game log for um, B-Ref, that would be tremendous. Where is it? There it is. Yeah, I mean, he got a lot better in, in Portland as he got going. Uh, let me get the splits for when he got his act together. Duran, until the end of the year from... Like, uh, let's see, when did he start hitting well? Probably around here. So from arbitrary endpoints alert, um, from July 21st to September 2nd, um, 292, 343, 398. So definitely the power is not there, but the strikeout rate was 41 divided by 176. Yeah, I guess it was still 23. So he was still striking out. He wasn't really walking. All right, fair enough. Um I mean, I just think the speed plays, especially if he, you know, get, figures out how to play center field. I don't know. For for now, I've got Dar- Durant, Jaron Durant higher. I could see that certainly changing. Um, Mike had him, Hilberto at four. You threatened to put Hilberto Jimenez at three, and then you kept him at six, Ian. Yeah, I, I 
I Did talk I talk myself, you off the ledge? No, I talk myself off the ledge. I, I got overly excited. I, I like him. I think there's upside, but he's so far away. There's still some concerning, some red flags. Again, like Duran, there's no power at all. Duran, even though Duran has there's more no power, Duran has more power, and he actually like swings left-handed, whereas Jimenez just throws his hands at the ball. Mm-hmm. So I, I need to see Gilberto develop more at the plate. And the other thing, I, I, Jimenez, I, I guess we didn't really talk about, but his defense still is a, is weird to me. Like he has n- no feel coming in on the ball. <laughs> no. It's really weird. Like I don't know what it is. He needs but reps. His his reads coming in are terrible. And like going back, it's fine on fly balls on uh, line drives in the gap. His roots are also bad. Mm-hmm. Like he's played balls into doubles or triples several times in the last couple of weeks when I've seen him. But like, and what what I mean, like played like a line drive where he should have cut it off by taking like one angle, but he was too straight and it got by him. Um, But like, he's good, like going back on the ball, but I just don't know what it is. He just can't read the ball off the bat coming in. And so I like with his offensive profile where it's going to be no power, it's going to be all contacts and speed. He has to be an above average to plus defender in center field for it to work. Yeah. And so yeah. that's why I'm like a little iffy. Like I still think there's a lot of upside because he's 18, but it was enough that like the questions kept him below those other guys for me. What grade would you put on his defense right now? And what future grade would you put on it? It's like a, I mean, it's like a 35, 40 right now. I think yeah. it could be like a 55. I think that sounds right. Cause it's, it's tough to project a two grade increase. The thing with him is he's so young and like the athleticism yeah. is there to be a plus to better defender. It's just the instincts aren't. And like, I'm not sure no, if you can teach reads. instincts. That's the question we're going to, I mean, that's what we'll find out. Well, reads you can learn from reps. Right? Yeah. And I the mean, thing that's... is though, he has to stick in center because he does not have the power to play in the corner and his yeah. athleticism is completely wasted there. So, right. Yeah. Right. Although he does, he does potentially have an above average. Maybe his arm is—he's got like arm. a sixty arm, fifty-five, yeah. sixty arm. Okay. He's got a good arm, but yeah. I, and I've had that's—I've seen it be that, but it's just yeah. The other, the other stuff is the issue. Got it. Unanimity on um, Hauk at seven. It's interesting um, that they're, we'll probably talk about it more in the next episode when we get to AFL stuff, yeah. but that they're back in the rotation. Well, yeah. at least for the AFL, I think that might just be an innings pitch thing. True. True. Um, get him some reps out there because they moved him to the bullpen Fair. and. Took his innings down. Um, Thaddeus Ward up to eight. Where well, I, I like him there. I agree. I, yeah, I, I want to put him above Hauk, but I don't think I can justify it yet. No, I think we'll have a better feel after we get reports on Hauk from the AFL. Yeah, I think that sounds right. Um, Noah Song at nine, unanimous uh, number nine on all of our rankings. Um, CJ Chatham at 10, uh, the next, down the next from, like 10 is like all over the place. Yeah. Though, it's really us. all over the place. We have a lot to discuss there when we do our season end rankings. Because like, I, I have Zephyr John at 10. Mike has that ward at 10. You have Decker at 10. Like, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot. I mean, you have, well, I mean, the biggest one is Aldo Ramirez who I probably, I had to, I admittedly had too low and I will be moving. Him up. Oh, yeah. I, I shoved him up. Well, I did. You I got him at 11. That's a little I put crazy. All the pitch, I put all, no, it's not. I put yes, all the pitchers is. next to each other. No, it's not. Yes, it but I, I put all the pitchers next to each other because I like them all equally. You, you, you can't choose between your children. I, I did choose. <laughs> but, Fair enough. Okay. But yeah, no. Um, yeah. I mean, I, Chatham's tough just because he's clearly the lowest ceiling of the guys we're talking about. I mean, you and I have him lower than he we is. We do. Right? We should yeah. put that like on the table, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll discuss him. It's going to be this, like, I think the top seven or so, six, seven is going to be pretty unanimous. In yeah, our top season. seven will be clear. It's the and part that's going to be, it's chaos from like eight or nine until 20 and then there's also chaos. Then after 20, it's like There's 20. another group of chaos, yeah. But like, it's like eight or nine to like 16 17 maybe yeah, there was someone on our forums who was like i can't believe you guys ranked brandon howlett below cameron cannon and listed all these reasons and it's like dude like it, you're, you're making way too much out of two spots in the teens in these rankings right now yeah. um right now i mean i guess you know kind of the the big movers in that group um I, you know from 11 to 20 it goes lugo decker uh, anthony flores who i had a hell of a time ranking yeah he just Zeph- needs any what? He needs an off season badly. Right. He's not even playing right now. Like, yeah, well, he played game one and he didn't play game two or game three. Oh, he did I, play game one. Okay. I didn't yeah, realize. And I think that that's 
about right. I think given all the infielders you have on this roster right now, I think that that's not a terrible thing to just like, look, Yeah, let's get Cannon Lugo and, and Rafaela some reps. Um, Zephyr John at 14, Chris Murphy at 15, up from 29. Nice little 14 spot. Bump. I mean, Murphy's like, I don't think he has the same upside, which is why I have him like fourth out of the Lowell arms. Yeah. Because I don't think he has as much upside as the other but you three. you still got him ranked higher than the, me or Mike does. Right, because I think that he's got a high floor, Mike and I, I just, I just think he can. He's going to throw a ton of strikes. He yeah. misses bats, like yeah. four pitch lefty. That's I mean, I like, he lasted like. to where he did because he walked a bunch of guys in college. Well, but they tweak something, and now he's no longer walking anybody. Yeah, and that's the thing for me is like I like. He's the kind of like safer like pitchability guy that I like mm-hmm. like that balances out when you have like the higher upside guys, you need those safer like pitch. And that's why I have him up there is because I know what he is. Like, I don't need to project out far. He's like, versus like Aldo Ramirez and someone I'm dreaming on and Aldo has way more upside. Mm-hmm. But like Murphy is like, you know what he is. You've seen all four pitches. They're all, you know, fifties. Maybe there's a 55, 60 in there with one of them or two of them. Like, you know what he is. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's why I just like him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, he's the, the, that group where it's going to be, I can't wait to see who kind of separates themselves. Um, but, yeah, um, Cameron Cannon at uh, – We talked about he's going to be a heck of a one to rank. I don't know what to – I mean, I'm going to need to see him in instructs, like get a better feel. Like I don't know what we're going to do with him. Yeah, I mean, Cannon where, – where he? so he's at 16. Aldo Ramirez is at 17. He's probably going to move up again, but he was up from 28. So nice little 11, 11 spot jump. Braden Howlett dropped from 13 to 18. Or I guess he was technically 14. Cause I don't think 13, he dropped. He just got passed by guys we saw more. He dropped for me. He dropped. For I mean, me. he dropped, I guess, a little for me. But it was just... I mean, I had I, him the highest out of ever, anybody, and I actively dropped him. Yeah. I um, just, like... I, yeah, he just got passed. I didn't really have he, a lot. Like, he needs an offseason like Flores does. Um, he, you know... Uh, but the thing is, I just when I saw him, and granted, you can you can only take so much from a two game look. I mean, there were some stuffs there. There were some things there that concerned me. But that said, if you've got Howlett at thirteen, I'm not going to argue with you. Um, Marcus Wilson at nineteen and Brian Bayo at twenty. Um, notably, Durbin Feldman falls out of the top twenty to twenty one. Bayo is another one we should probably mention because he had a really good second half. I think it was like really good end of the year. Yeah, he was striking out a ton of guys. And he's another one that's going to be like an interesting one to rank um, Here, I come next it. season. I got it. So at the beginning of the, I mean, he was struggling at one point. I mean, looking at his numbers from the beginning of the season through June the 29th, this 14 starts, he had a seven seven eight ERA. He had allowed 84 hits and 59 innings. He had struck out 56 guys, but he also walked 24. His whip was. Not yeah, great. Not good. Um, from July through the end of the year in 11 starts, um, and I probably could actually throw that July 4th start in with that first grouping. But, uh, yeah, 59 innings pitched, 51 hits. The ERA was still 305, but 63 Whatever. strikeouts in 59 innings and just 14 walks. Yeah. So, I mean, actually, the, the, if you, if you start are- with July the 13th, it, it's, it's 59 strikeouts and 54 innings and just nine walks. Because yeah. he like for, five guys. On the- for me, when I when I look at like stats and like Greenville and stuff, the things I like focus on is strikeouts and really it's just strikeouts and walks. Mm-hmm. Like I like like even if you take like whole season stats, 119 strikeouts and 117 innings. So he strike out an inning and 38 walks only, which is yeah. too much, but it's still not that bad. So mm-hmm. like, it's an encouraging for a guy who, I mean, you look Age at it, 20 he, season. He, he jumped directly from, he had one appearance in the GCL last year and he jumped directly to Salem or to, to the Sally league. Like mm-hmm. that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. And so, he had yeah. multiple starts with 10 or more strikeouts. Yeah. So that's a guy, he's a guy who, um, he's going to, he's, he, he obviously had a huge innings increase this year. So he's probably going to be done for the year. Oh yeah. Definitely um, no instruction. Yeah. So no, he's going to be one though. That'll be interesting to see come spring training next year. Cause I'm yeah, you look, they you, let him through 117 innings. It's a lot. I was just actually thinking that jumping from 70 to 117. That I would have thought a lot of innings. Yeah. So that's, I mean, the must, the, and he, he got they, better as the year went on. Which that's the encouraging thing. Like, yeah. you know, he had that big jump, but, you know, second half of the year, 13 strikeouts, 10 strikeouts, eight strikeouts. Like, 
that's and if you look like he didn't give up more than three runs um other than his last start of the year uh only once since july since july Mm -hmm. and he's he's younger than zephyr john murphy and song yeah um he's two years older than aldo yeah, so he, he's he's an interesting guy, definitely. He's a top 20 prospect for me. Yeah, and I mean, it's funny because I think we had him in the top 20 after spring training and when he got assigned to Greenville. I and think so. And then he fell out um, because he, he fell out when he was struggling like crazy mid-year, became like a 20 to 30 guy, and then jumps back into the top 20 in the September ranking up from 25 or really 24 if you take out Darwin's. And, um, after that, Ian, I guess we should just mention the big movers. Pedro Castellanos, up from 37 to 26. We just can't quit him. We just can't quit Pedro. Um, I don't know. Have we? You're on mute. You're on mute. Vote for Pedro. Um, I'm actually not a good person to talk about this because I'm way lower than that, but <laughs> I didn't move him up as much. Well, you had him. I'm 31. 31. I mean, Mike and I had him at 24 and 26. I mean, here's the thing with Castellanos. I don't know how much we've talked about him recently. I think we might have talked about him recently, but if you look uh, from, you can just tell by looking in the home run column, from July the 17th until the end of the season, in 30 games, he had eight home runs. Oh, he did the thing we've been begging him to do for forever. Yeah, 295, 350, 580. And his entire career... Before that, so if that's 2006 in the DSL, or 2016, sorry, in the DSL, 2017 in the Gulf Coast League, and then like a cup of coffee with Greenville for the playoffs, and last year in Greenville, and the rest of this season before then, he had seven home runs. <laughs> so he doubled yeah. his career home run output in a month and a half. So, yes, I know. Well, I mean, we're talking about, I mean, we're not talking about every guy. Yet. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's a big jump for me. Um, yeah, go ahead. Talk well, about the I was just, big jump. The, I think. We the, talked about him last time. Ibar. We talked yeah. about Ibar last time. Yeah, we did. So Ibar, obviously, he's really, he was really good at the end of the year, got promoted. He's been good since his promotion. Jumped eight spots. Um, yeah. He's a 29. Uh, then, 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 seven then, spots, he's a 29. Yeah. The other big jumps were mostly just guys who got. He jumped eight spots. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, it's, it's that's he was tied with Bizarro for twenty eight. Okay, 29. yeah. The other guys were like, like Jorge Rodriguez was not ranked, and <laughs> now he's thirty seventh. And that was just because we got a report on him to finally, so we knew why he was so his numbers were so absurd. Because uh-huh. his numbers, I don't know if you have them up. His numbers in um in the GCL this year were insane. Um. Uh-huh. There's so many Jorge Rodriguez. This is yeah, impossible. No, I'm just doing um, it from our site. Yeah, in the GCL, 46 and two thirds, ERA below two, 58 Ks, nine walks, nine walks in 40. Yeah. Again, you know, under 50 innings. And he's come up to Lowell and he's through four and two thirds innings, four strikeouts, no walks, gave up mm-hmm. two runs, but he'll, yeah, he'll, so he'll pitch on Sunday. He's yeah, I think he's pitching Sunday. I saw him. He's small, but I guess this stuff is good. So he's interesting. Five Rafa, and one seven. Yeah. Rafaela moved up, which we talked about. Um, we should Jonathan, mention Danny Diaz moving down, too. <laughs> yeah, but I, my, he, I didn't move him down that far, I don't think. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like he just got demoted, but whatever. He's still young. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, Jonathan Diaz went up a little bit. Um, he had a really good year with Salem. And, like, the stuff kind of under been, the radar. The stuff has always been, like, pretty good with him. It's just he's never – he's had injury issues. Like, I think he had Tommy John. He also missed a year uh, with, like, a knee injury. I think he tore an ACL. Yeah, so, you know, he's had some injuries, but um, he's, like – I don't think he had Tommy John. I think he missed a year with the knee injury. The 2015 year? Was that a knee? Okay, I I knew it was a knee. We assumed it was Tommy John, and then we heard it was a knee. It's like a torn ACL. Um, Yeah, yeah, it was an ACL. yeah, he's I missed like 2015 a, with a knee injury. It's in his. He's like a notes. fringy guy to me still, but um, you know he's interesting. Alex, I love, him. I, love I love Diaz because we have reported he threw just as hard with either arm when he signed. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, switch pitcher. Switch uh, pitcher. Alex Scherf went way down. I just he needs to move to the bullpen now. That's the yeah. thing for me. He repeated Greenville and the numbers still weren't great. Yeah, and that's that's pretty much all we need to talk about. That's the rankings. Yeah, yeah, I think that sounds about right. Um, you know, there's some guys lurking. 
Yeah, I think we'll talk about more though, like for end of season because that's like yeah, the that's big one. Matter a little bit more. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's. Um, we got one email that we want to hit it right now, Ian. No. All right. We'll hit it. We will hit that. We'll hit the email next week. Um, actually, hold on. We got to see if it's from a patron. Podcasty bills. Email is from Matthew. Matthew. Well, actually, okay. We already basically talked about it. So it's just, I heard your recent podcast, I listened to them all. I'd love to hear that Groom is coming back. In the case of most pitchers, you both say that these guys will most likely be a reliever. Of all the pitching prospects in the Sox organization, which do you think one has a chance to be a starter in the majors? Where do you think they'll be in the rotation one to five? Um, well, no, I actually, we say a lot of pitchers end up relievers, but ironically right now the Red Sox have a lot of guys I actually think can start, which is a flip over their previous years. Like, if you ask me right now, like, I would say Mata, Groom, um, Ward, Song, Zephyr, John, Murphy, Ramirez are all, all like, potential them? starters. Oh, potential, okay. Yeah, I'm not saying they are, but they're all potential starters. Whereas, like, which is, in my opinion, if you're a potential starter, it means I think you have a better than, like, a 60-40 or better chance of starting. Yeah, I think that's right. So, just yeah. With the way, just with just ad- atrophy. Yeah, so that's how I would look at it. When the fact that I just listed, what, six, seven guys? Yeah. That's way better than past years. I so. mean, as far as where they'd be in the rotation, there's definitely no top of the rotation guys. No. Like I think Groom, Mata's a mid-rotation guy. Groom's a Groom mid-rotation and, guy. Groom and Mata, if you want to squint and everything breaks correctly, maybe they're like low-end twos, high-end threes. But the yeah. mid-rotation, like Mata, Groom, um, Zephyr John, maybe, Aldo, like four, five, so. four, Song, um song and like ward i think are like fours yeah. uh murphy's like a four or five like yeah so they you don't like have any for like, john better than song now don't you no they're like similar i don't know I, I i like them equally that's why i had them right next to each other in their rankings um but i i think zephyr john is slightly more upside eh. yeah i think this will be a question I, we hit during the. I don't know. Season, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to think about it more because yeah. I've seen. I got I got to look back through my notes and mm-hmm. talk to some people. I'll get back to you on that one. It's mm-hmm. a good well, question. Thanks for the me. question, Matthew. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. Well, thanks to everyone for listening. Thank you to our podcast editor Joe Tetral. You can follow Ian at Ian Cundall. That's I A N C U N D A L L. Follow me at S P Chris Hatfield. We'll be back at you next week with an episode of the podcast. Um, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, We'll be back in your eardrums soon.